Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord and welcome to the Scripture Cathedral, where our very fine pastor is Pastor Donnell Long. To all our visitors, please know you're always welcome here at Scripture Cathedral, and we are so glad you decided to join us this morning. Every Sunday at 8.45 a.m., we invite you and your family to join us for our Sunday morning Jubilee service. These services are extremely powerful, so make plans to join us every Sunday at 8.45 a.m. We also love you to join us every Sunday for Sunday school from 9.35 a.m. to 10.10 a.m. In the way of announcements, Tuesday, 7.30 p.m., Seal Long Bible Institute will be in session. Thursday at 7.30, we're going to come back for prayer at the cathedral. Whatever you are going through in your life, join us this Thursday in prayer and watch God move. Also, please be sure to join us for our remaining January New Year's Revival services every Saturday and Sunday at 11 a.m. During the month of January, our remaining special guest ministers include Bishop Brian Martin from Freedom Church, Baltimore, Maryland, Pastor Jack Johnson, Crusade for Christ Church, Richmond, Virginia. Also on Saturday after the prayer, the Cathedral Kids will have rehearsal. It's celebration time. Join the Scripture Cathedral and Pastor Donnell Long for Scripture Cathedral's 62nd and Pastor Donnell Long's fifth pastoral anniversary. <laughs> the reception will be held at the beautiful Camelot located at 13905 Central Avenue, Upper Marble, Maryland, on March the 20th. At 7 p.m., a delicious dinner will be served along with special entertainment by Darnell Moore & Company. This is a semi-formal affair. You can purchase your tickets online or you can call the church office, 301-333-5300, or you can see Queen Joanne in the lobby after each service. And also don't forget that pastor's aid envelopes will be collected today. You can submit your envelope to either Minister Moss, Minister Townsend, or Elder Parker. You can also use the machines to make your donation. And the pastor's aid ministry thanks you for your support. And also, you can contact the church office, 301-333-5300, request your 2019 tax statement. If you call outside of business hours, leave a voicemail message on extension 202, and you can see either Minister Townsend or Elder Parker to pick up your tax statement. For more information regarding our upcoming events or to plan a seat offering, you can visit us online at www.scm.church. Again, welcome to the Scripture Cathedral, and enjoy the service. Scripture readings, please stand for the reading of our scripture. We're going to read responsively Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. I will read the first, you read the second, so forth and so on. We'll read the 14th verse together. When you have it, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all his blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, and thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall establish thee an holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. 
And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them together. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Please remain standing for the prayer. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let every heart pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come unto you as humble as we know how. First of all, we want to say thank you, Lord, for waking us bright early this morning. We want to thank you, Lord, for giving us the activities of our limbs, Lord. We want to thank you right now, Lord, for constantly blessing us and keeping us under your blood, Lord. Right now, Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord, because we know that all is well, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, because we know that you're doing ab above and beyond what we can ask and thank, Lord. Also, Lord, we want, to, we want you to bless us continuously, protect us, keep us under your blood. I pray, Lord, that you would touch the first family, Lord. Touch them from the top of their heads down to the soles of their feet. Bless the man of God, Lord. Touch him, continue to give him wisdom, strength, and also discernment, Lord, to lead your people. I pray, Lord, that you would touch everyone on in here on today, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would change someone's lives on today, Lord. I pray, Lord, that someone will be blessed, filled, healed, delivered, Lord, on today, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will bless the speaker, Lord. I pray, Lord, that he would decrease and you would increase, Lord. I pray, Lord, that someone will be touched on the day, Lord. And go through the stream, Lord, hallelujah. Bless those that are hearing and that are seeing us right now, Lord. Do not forget about them, Lord, hallelujah. Touch our country, Lord, hallelujah. Bless it, Lord, hallelujah. Protect it, Lord, hallelujah. And keep us under your blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. to give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that he's an on-time God? I said, how many of you know that he's an on-time God? How many of you know that he woke you up this morning? Started you on your way. Hallelujah. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is.
Now since everybody knows that he's an on-time God, since everybody knows that he's an on-time God, how do you know that he's all right? How do you know that he's all right? Come on, man.
Is he all right with you? Is God all right with you? Glory to God. You have come to the right place this morning to receive what you need from the Lord Jesus Christ. For those of you that don't know, this is a praise first church. And we believe in praising God. Glory to God. We believe in giving God glory. We believe in giving God honor. Shall we stand in the sanctuary? And let us receive our pastor and man of God, Pastor Donnell Long. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many are glad to be here on this morning? This beautiful Sunday morning because it could have been the other way but God kept you all week long and for that you owe him a praise <laughs> on last evening and all through the night some people lost their lives because of storms but you're here this morning and I want you to turn to your neighbor and say neighbor thank God I made it to another Sunday now how many mothers and fathers do I have in here with elementary uh, kids that are in school when I was in the back Shane showed me a news report where a 11 year old boy went to school and killed a couple of people and killed himself so I'm a little confused because if I was a mother or a father, you couldn't stop me from praising God. Your kids go to school every day. And let me tell you what's keeping them. The blood of Jesus has them covered. Now listen. I want all my young people to come down front. See, y'all think the devil is only after old folk. But he does not want to see them reach their destiny. He will try to stop them. But God told me to bring them down front and let the young people praise them with everything they got. So young people, start praising God right now. Even if you don't feel like it, praise him. Pastor, why are you telling us to praise him? Because your future looks bright. Y'all think young people don't go through anything. But you got to praise him. The devil wants to cut you off. But I want you to look to somebody, young people, look to somebody beside you and tell them, I'm not going to give up. Because God is on my side. Now do y'all understand that the devil is under your foot? Do you understand that? He is under your foot. You have power over the devil. Now, where, now I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you a test. I'm going to give you a test right quick. Where does the devil belong? Can you pick that foot up and stomp it? 
He belongs under your Now turn to them and tell them, guess what, y'all? They said we wasn't going to make it, but we're going to make it. Tell them again, we're going to make it. Listen, I've been through some hard stuff, but I'm going to make it. I felt like giving up as a young person, but I'm going to make it. Listen, young people, y'all got more energy than I have. Y'all got more good legs than I have. I need some of y'all to give God the best dance you ever gave him in your life. Because listen, something is getting ready to happen. God is getting ready to do something for the young people. Old people, middle-aged people, I'm not talking to you right now. But God is getting ready to do something in the young people's lives. Dance your way to that scholarship. Dance your way to those good grades. Dance your way to a good occupation. Now, I got some young people down here. Where are the parents at? Get down here and dance with your children. Parents, find your child and dance with them. Grandma, find them. Auntie, find them. Dance with them. The devil is a liar. Parents, guardian, God just said to me that he got your children covered. I said he got them covered. Now everybody else give God a praise. Praise him. Something is getting ready to happen. Take it on up a little bit. Take it on up a little bit. I feel something getting ready to happen, musicians. 
people and tell them I am somebody. I am somebody. Thank you, musician. I had to do that. <laughs> because you don't know what the devil is trying to do to young people. But everything is going to be all right. It shall be well. Touch the person next to you and tell them it shall be well. Shall be. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask the deacons to prepare themselves for a tithe offering. If you are tithing.
Come on, clap your hands for Jesus, everybody. You came to really praise and worship him. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is a song you can move on, so you don't have to stay seated. Once you hear the music, you just jump on up and start to give God some praise and dancing and all of that, all right? All right. Y'all hear that? Come on, clap your hands. Everybody there. Let me hear y'all say, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you're good. Mm, Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. And your mercy forever. Oh, Lord, you're good. You are good. You are good. Say, people, people. From generation.
how many know that God is good all the time? And all the time, he is good. And he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Are you all ready for the word of God on this morning? On yesterday, Pastor Lampkin preached. And I had a question for him when we were over there eating. I said, so what are you going to do tomorrow? Well, I want you to get ready because we're getting ready to go higher. Tell somebody we're getting ready to go higher. I want you to receive my friend in the gospel all the way from St. Louis, Missouri. Pastor Michael Lampkin. Give him a hand as he shall come. Do me a favor since I'm home. Everybody point your finger at him and say preach preacher. your hands at somebody all over the sanctuary now God we thank you for life health and strength now God we thank you for life health and strength now God we thank you for life, health, and strength. <laughs> now, God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. You've been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. And so now, God, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on us today. We thank you that we are alive and well thank you that last night was not our last night thank you that your blood covered our house thank you that it is the blood that is yet running warm in our veins and so God we thank you for life health and strength thank you God that you have allowed us to see this 12th day of the new year we love you I said we love you I said we love you we appreciate you thank you for the angel of this house thank you for this church now god bless us that we may receive a word from you in the name of jesus i decrease so that you may increase get the glory out of our life today and i declare that we will not leave here the same way that we came in thank you that the hand that we're holding is a hand of deliverance it's a hand of power it's a hand of prosperity it's a hand of miracles signs and wonders and i thank you god that you're going to do something for the hand that i'm holding this week that god i thank you for good news this week i thank you god hallelujah for unexpected doors this week and we give you glory honor and praise in jesus name and the people of god do say amen if you love god clap your hands and give him the best praise you can give him come on celebrate him if he's been good to you celebrate your god celebrate your savior let the redeem of the lord say so you got about 25 more seconds to give him glory honor and adoration it is in him that we live we move and we have our being hallelujah look at somebody and say neighbor out of all the things i've been through i still have joy i still i still have my joy help me thank god for your pastor your leader your teacher your visionary pastor darnell long come on make him feel a little bit better celebrate him let's celebrate the fragrance of the house lady long come on yeah show us some love yeah let's thank god for queen mother come on yeah amen also can we clap for the founder yeah Apostle C.L. Long, come on, let's come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I would be remiss if I didn't do that. Come on, 30 more seconds, come on. Let's thank God for his life, his legacy, his teaching, his preaching, his vision, his connections, his favor. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is so good. I uh, I told uh, Pastor Ed I was up last night just looking at some scripture cathedral clips and I was quickening in my hotel room, man. It's no, I'm serious. I really was. There was a guy who was shouting down the aisle and apostle came and laid hands on him and I started quick. I said, wait a minute. That's when you know you got the Holy Ghost. You can still feel the power of God. Huh? And that same power that was in those clips is still in this church today. You ought to thank God that the power of the Holy Ghost is in this church. Come on, y'all celebrate. I am honored to preach at the legendary scripture cathedral and God is good you may have your seats I thank God for one more opportunity to share here to all of the ministers and the ecclesiastical clergy men and women of the gospel we acknowledge you to every praise and worship leader all the band God is so good uh, it is uh, uh, you can't let everybody preach in your pulpit so I do not take this lightly that uh, that I have been privileged to come and share one more Easter speech with you uh, and so uh, that's all I want to do, just share a little Easter speech, and then I'll get out of, get out of your way. Uh, there is a word found in St. Mark chapter 8, verses 22, verses 26. Um, is there C? Uh, <clears throat> this song has become one of my personal uh, songs of devotion, and uh, I love it because it speaks to uh, the saints right where you are um, and it speaks about who God has called us to be it just says oh don't you know that you a call for greatness chosen to reign to lead with holy boldness I see your failures and I know you need answers but those with great failures uh, yeah, are blessed to be great winners here's what you got to do so see yourself in the future cause you are royalty oh see yourself in the future look at somebody and tell them you are royalty tell somebody tell them that's what you are that's what you are Tell them, oh, see yourself, see yourself in the future. Uh, yeah, you are royalty. Oh, Trevor, sing, welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we live, we still lift our hands as we live our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name I love you Lord I love you I love you Lord today here it is because you cared for me in such a special way hallelujah and so that's why I praise you Glory to God. And I lift you up. And I magnify your, your name. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Jesus, you're the center of 
my joy. I only got a few people came to have a little church. joy hallelujah salvation and glory I honor and power unto the Lord our God what is it for the Lord our God is mighty hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey glory yes the Lord our God is a liberal The Lord our God, He is wonderful. Here's my part. So all praise and speak Woo! to the King of Kings and the Lord. This morning, oh, praise us. I'll pray this be to the King of Kings and the Lord, the Lord our God. He is one, He is wonderful. Can everybody say yes? Come on, church. Yes. Say yeah. Come on. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Come on, one more time. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Come on. Yes. to go now. Who can stand me for us when we hey oh yeah when we call on oh yeah I feel the power of God that great name his name is Jesus Jesus, precious, precious Jesus. Come on, everybody, we have, come on, we have the victory. Now clap your hands real fast and say, I got it, 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 I got it. I said, clap your head and said, I got it, I got it. Oh, yeah. St. Mark chapter 8, verse 22. I want to read from the King James Version. Hallelujah. Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 8, verse 22. Read verse 22 through 26. 
Thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. When you have it, say, have the bread. <clears throat> the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 8, verse 22. It's, it reads as this. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. <clears throat> After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored <laughs> and saw every man clearly. 26th verse and he sent him away to his house hallelujah his house glory to God and says neither go into the town nor tell it to anyone in that town I want to go back to uh, I want to backstroke back to uh, third 23rd verse and he talking about Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town the town of Bethsaida that's what he's talking about and he took him took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town yeah the grass will let the flowers do fade away but the word of our God shall stand forever I want to preach for a little while for the time that is mine he's going to do it but not here look at your neighbor and encourage them say he's going to do it but not here You may have your seat, sorry. He's going to do it, just not here. <clears throat> uh, there is, um, first of all, um, when we look at in business, there is something called, there's something that they use called location 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 which signifies the fact that if opening a business is one thing but where your business is located is just as important as you opening because wherever your business is it has to be in a place where it's, it's easily accessible and so wherever you're located if it's hard to get to or if it's in a bad neighborhood or if <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you come on. Y'all know something like, oh, where is that? Oh, no, no, I'm not going down there. And no, I'm saying that. Yeah. <laughs> you better look out. You better, you better hope I order online because if, if, you know, if online is terrible, I ain't, I ain't doing that either. So, so location has everything to do with where you're located. Is the neighborhood good? Is, it, is, it, is the ground worthy of business? Is your place, is your business in a place where it is, where it is surrounded by growth? It is surrounded by a thriving community. All of that plays a part. Also what plays a part is the message behind your business. What is the message you're trying to convey? Uh, what is your purpose behind why you open this up? Because it has to be more than just you opening up for revenue. There has to be an underlining message. There has to be, uh, there has to be a, a, a message, a main source as to why you do what you do. And so now when we look at this text, ladies and gentlemen, we find here that location is very important for this man's deliverance. All right. So now let's just so now let's just look at uh, let's just look at what's going on in in, in Saint Mark chapter eight. First, you find Jesus uh, feeding seven thousand uh, uh, seven thousand people with seven loaves of bread and just a few fish. All right. And then and then the Bible talks about uh, when Jesus gets to the town. Uh, the Bible also talks about uh, before we get to the blind man. The Bible talks about that Jesus after he comes off of the boat, ladies and gentlemen, he is met by the Pharisees who is asking him for a sign they want a sign from heaven give us a sign from heaven Jesus and Jesus asks why do this generation seek for a sign he's asking them this because they're not looking for a sign for, they're not looking for a sign of heaven because they believe 
They're looking for a sign from heaven to challenge Jesus. And so now at this point, Jesus does not have time to be showing signs to people who will still not believe. Thank you for my amen. He's not getting ready to exhaust so much energy to people who are still going to have the same mindset. Ladies and gentlemen, let me encourage you today that miracles are not just for praise breaks. Miracles are for somebody to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, do you understand? A uh, uh, matter of fact, when you understand when uh, 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 when Jesus told Peter to launch out into the deep for a drought of fish, Peter said we've uh, Peter said we toiled all last night, but nevertheless at your word. And the Bible says he launches out again. Hallelujah! And the Bible said he draws in so much fish that causes Peter to repent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I know. We don't hear about that part all the time. But but Peter grabs so much fish to where he has to apologize to the same person he doubted. Ladies and gentlemen, miracles happen and blessings happen to the people. Hallelujah! That Hallelujah! That once they see miracles happen, they say, "God, let me apologize because I didn't think you were that able." And so now. And so miracles is not just for praise, but therefore uh, it should be a transforming of your mind. It should be a change in your heart, in your mind, and in your spirit. And so now these Pharisees only wanted a sign hallelujah, to try to hold something else against Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, let me free all of us uh, in this season of 2020, in this new decade. Please do not waste your time explaining yourself to people whose mind is already made up. You can have the facts, you can have the truth, but if they don't believe you, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you do. You can give them all of the evidence. If their mind is made up, they're not going to believe. they just not going to believe. And what, you, and, and what you and I cannot do in this season, we cannot cast our pearls before swine. Hallelujah. Would you look at somebody and tell them, I ain't got time for that this year. I, I, I'm not finna go back and forth with nobody who don't believe. And so now Jesus says that this generation will not see a sign. Why? Because seeing a sign, how it means nothing if you don't realize the Savior behind the sign. Good God Almighty. If you don't see the master behind the miracle, then what's the point of you asking for one? And so now when we look further now in the 22nd verse, hello, we, uh, we, we find here now that there is a blind man who is blind. He's unable to see. Uh, and, and, and when you look up the word blind, it just does not mean he's in a dark place, but it also could mean that he cannot comprehend. He cannot see with clarity. We'll get to that in just a minute. And so now above that, you find, you find that there are Pharisees who are looking for a sign not to believe, but they're just trying to trip Jesus up. But then you see now in the 22nd second verse that the bible said there is some people yeah or, or or in your text it says they the bible said there is a blind man and there are some people who bring a blind man to jesus and they ask jesus they uh, how do they beseech jesus which means they beg him they employ him they entreat him to heal this blind man the shouting there are several shouting points about that the first point is this good god almighty is that this text does not tell us that there is a relationship between this blind man or these people otherwise they would have said his friends they didn't say that the bible says they or it says some people in some translation which means there are some people who did not know him but saw him in his condition and decided i know somebody who could help him and so let me bring him to the person that we know that could heal him Good God Almighty, I love you. I'm trying not to shout so soon. And so now in this season, I want to thank God for the people who didn't necessarily know me. Hallelujah. But they led me to somebody that could heal me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, every now and again, you ought to thank God that your blessings have come from unusual resources. There are people who didn't know your name, your address or nothing, but God assigned them to lead you to a place that you could get better. Do I have anybody in here that thank God for the people that God put in your life that you didn't have no relationship with, but God opened up a door for them to move you into your next place of victory? What I also like about this text is that these people became his eyes and, and, and they became his direction until he became it. Okay, all right, all right, let me say it one more time. There were people that he did not know, but Tim, they became his help until he was able to help himself. Good God. 
God Almighty. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the righteous will never be forsaken. God will always send somebody to help you until you get back on your feet again. God will always send the necessary tools that will help you while you are. I wish I would talk to some people that said there was a point in time in my life I wasn't talking right, I wasn't living right, I wasn't thinking right, but God sent me some people that prayed for me, that covered me, that helped me until I got back on my feet again. I wish I had about two people that had to clap your hands and give God praise that he sent some people to help you until you got on your feet again. They became your strength until your strength came back. They became your joy until your joy got back. They became your energy until your energy got back. They became your mind until your mind came back. And I want to thank God for the people that helped me without a thank you. Okay, all right, y'all ain't talking. I, want, I said, I want to thank God for the people who helped me but didn't leave no IOUs. Oh, yeah. I want to thank God for the people that said, I don't care about a thank you. I just want to make sure you recover all. So, so now, so now, they was rocking with him until he was able to rock by himself. They covered him until he got back on his feet again. And so now the Bible declares that Jesus takes this man out of the city. Where he was was in Bethsaida. And Bethsaida did not meet the criteria for miracles. Uh, they seen many, but they didn't repent. And so uh, miracles uh, there, uh, uh, miracles there were seen, uh, but they weren't taken seriously. And so now Jesus has to take this man by the hand and he leads him out of the city. Let me say one more time. Jesus takes this man out. He, get, he grabs him by the hand first. And then he leads him out of the city. Now this is 2020. And so now the 11 Hebrew. Uh, 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 the 11 Hebrew word is calf. K-A-F. And it deals with an open palm. Yeah. Palm of the hand. And it deals with something in it. And so ladies and gentlemen. Please understand that this is your year of a hand. Okay, all right, y'all want y'all y'all want to handle church. This is the year where God will send you a hand to just in case, just in case you're in a place where you can't see, just in case you're in a place where you don't know how to get out. God is gonna give you a hand. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm looking for my people here that said, "Here it is." I want to thank God that in this season I will not be alone. He said, "I will never leave you nor forsake you." So somebody tell me, "This is the year of my handout." God's gonna give me a handout, but He won't just give me a handout. There's going to be something in that hand for me to take. Tell somebody, tell, he's going to take me by the hand. It's one thing to take me by the hand. It's another thing to take me by the hand and lead me out. Because, see, there are some places, some stuff that, Tim, I wouldn't have got out of myself. And so now what God had to do is he had to drag me out of some places. Okay, y'all sit here like, okay, all right, all right. I don't want to talk to the super sanctified people today. I want to talk to the people that said that was some stuff I was in. I didn't have sense enough to get out of myself. And so God had to drag me out of some places. I wish you would talk to somebody and tell them, I thank God. He pulled me out of darkness. He pulled me out of depression. He pulled me out of suicide. He pulled me out of doubt. He pulled me out of worry. He pulled me. Just somebody tell him he's dragging me to my next place. A blessing. He pulled me. He pulled me. He pulled me. It brings me to my first point. He's going to do it, but not here, because where you were presented will not be where you will, will not be the place of your deliverance. Let me say it again: where you are presented will not be the place of your deliverance. The, these people presented him in Bethsaida, but that is not where his deliverance is going to take place. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please understand that God will never ever lead you out, hallelujah, and not lead you up. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand that when Jesus takes this man out, he takes him out to open him up. Hallelujah, which means that where he is uh, is too claustrophobic for a miracle. And I want to tell somebody out that God is leading you out because where you are is too enclosed. Uh, they don't have an open mind. Uh, hallelujah, they are doubting the very existence of God. And now God has to get you out of a place that's not conducive for his will. Can I tell you in this season, do not fight God. When
when he's changing your location. Do not doubt God. Do not wrestle with God when God is changing you. That's so now if the people are walking out of your life, that's a God thing. If God is allowing you to meet new people, that's a God thing. Because in this season, I don't want to be connected with people who can. I want to be connected with people who can do all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so he gets him out. And he leads him to a place. Hallelujah. He takes him out of maybe. Puts him in the actuality. Takes him out of situation for revelation. Uh, he takes him and he levels him up. Let me, ladies and gentlemen, God's going to do it, but not here because here it is. Where He leads you, He will also. He, uh, where He leads you out, uh, He will level you up. And so now in this season, God will never ever just take you out of a place and just leave you in the same place. God always takes us out so that He can put us at another level. All right, okay, okay, let me try to come grab you like this. Uh, uh, Bishop Noel Jones, he tells a story about how uh, he was in Cozumel and, and he was going, you know, scuba diving, and so he couldn't go down to, couldn't go down too low because he had to get on the plane the next day, and so it's not wise to go that far down and then get all the way up in the air like that. And so he only went down about 40 feet, and so now, and so now, uh, and so now his tourist guide, uh, the guy who went down with him in the water in Cozumel, uh, the guy who went down with him in Cozumel, uh, now. Uh, because Noah Jones only goes down 40 feet and so the guy is now down there a little bit deeper and so now he's looking for Bishop Noah Jones uh, and he cannot find him but I told you that there's too much air in Bishop Noah Jones Valley, and so now he's beginning to rise to the top and so Bishop Noah Jones see how the same guy that went down with him now he cannot talk to him because they are up underwater so he's saying to himself in his mind if he would just look up if he would just look up, he would realize that I'm not where he left me. Okay, cheerful don't know where to shout. And can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there are people honey, that are still looking for you to be in the place called down. But if they don't really, if you would just look up, I'm not where you left me. I'm at a whole nother new level. Can I tell you the reason why some people can't find you? is because God has delivered you where they left you. Whoosh. I wish I had somebody say tell down I'm gone I'm not there anymore God has lifted me above my problems and lifted me above my limitation he's lifted me and, uh, he takes him he takes him and he leads him out hallelujah he leads him out uh, for a miracle and so now what he does is uh, he leads him out uh, for a miracle and so now now look at the calculated process of this healing because now Jesus leads him out of a place that does not believe because you'll find it in Matthew 11 and 21 where it said if Chorazin and Bethsaida hallelujah if, uh, 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 if Tyree and, and, and if Sidon would have seen hallelujah the miracles that Chorazin and Bethsaida would have saw they would have at least repented but here it is you all see the miracle and you still don't change and so now this is why God has to lead them out because you're in a place that does not repent you're in a place that does not have an about face change because you do know repentance and I'm sorry are two different things if I tell you I'm sorry that means I could do it again but if I repent that means I'm having an about face change which means I never want to be who I was and so now he has to lead him out of a place that wants to stay stagnated and so now he leads him out but he then he spits on his eyes wait a minute you lead me out just to spit on me uh, now we save if somebody was to spit on you not for sure how, how long your holy ghost will hold up because it's, it's very disrespectful to spit in somebody's eyes let alone spit on them anywhere I mean, and see the thing is this is not by this is not by accident this is on purpose Jesus spits on him he spits in this man's eyes on purpose what do you do when the person you're looking up to spits on you what do you do when the person that you that the person that you're trusting now seems like they're being disrespectful what do you do ladies and gentlemen please understand hallelujah that uh, 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 please understand this that you may have been blinded by incident but you get ready to be healed by divine providence okay let me help you so now now please understand now please understand that there is a reason why this man is blind because the truth 
of the matter is this, ladies and gentlemen. Had this man of had this man had of seen how Christ was going to heal him, he would have stopped the process. I want to thank God for the time He didn't show me how I was going to get there. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Some okay, all right. I wish I would talk to people. Say, had I'd have known this would have been the process to becoming who I am now, I would have told God, no, no, no. But He had to blind me in order to get me through the process. I wish I was talking to at least five people in here that said He blinded me in order to bless me because I would have been the blocker of my own success. I would have been the blocker of my own future. And so I want to thank God that there was a season while I was in the dark and I had no other choice but to trust him because you do realize that this man had to trust the people to lead him to Jesus and then he had to trust Jesus to lead him to an unknown place so somebody tell her I don't know how but I do have to trust the one that's leading me God will always tell me to do some stuff that don't make no sense but I got to trust God and say I don't know how but I'm not going to sit up here and block my blessing by arguing with the one who knows everything I wish you would high five two people tell them in this season you need to trust God. It don't make no sense. It doesn't meet your budget. It doesn't match what you're looking at. But you got to learn how to trust God anyhow. And declare, Lord, any way you bless me, I will be satisfied. Now, this is for my four people that, uh, uh, that want to have a little church. He spits in this man's eyes. Good God, a man that love you down back in those days. Saliva was used for, uh, uh, was used for medicinal purposes. But it's also DNA in saliva. And so now what Jesus is doing is uh, when he spits in this man's eyes, uh, it also signifies healing, uh, but it also signifies Jesus' DNA uh, which says, I want what's in me on you. Okay, all right. Now the shouting point is this. Now the spitting of the eyes looks real nasty. It looks real disrespectful. So pastor, how can I get through a disrespectful and a nasty process? Well, the Bible said that Jesus spits on this man's eyes. But then the Bible said he lays hands upon him. Which means Jesus' hands is on the same eyes he just spit in. Ladies and gentlemen, where is your shouting point? It may look nasty. It may look jacked up. It may look crazy, but his hands on it. Okay, y'all don't want to talk. I wish I had somebody in here to know that even though it looks jacked up, it looks crazy. The reason why I can get through it is because his hands is on it. I wish you would high five two people tell him, thank God, his hands are on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. His hands are on it. I may not understand the process, but his hands is on it. May not like it, but his hands is on it. May not feel good, but his hands is on it. Hallelujah to God. It's on him. See, sometimes God will take you through uncommon gestures for profit or miracles. Naaman was told to dip seven times in the Jordan River, but he got healed. Gideon traded guns for clay jars and candles and, and ram's horns, but, but, but they won. Elijah pours flour in a, in a poisonous stew, and they all ate and nobody died. Tamar dressed herself like a prostitute to be birthed with her future. David started foaming at the mouth, but he was able to escape death. So these are all uncommon gestures, uh, but they have profitable outcomes because God had his hand in it. And so now Jesus spits in his eyes and lays hands on him. And then he asks him, now, what do you see? Because here's the part that's going to be part of our deliverance. Deliverance comes when we learn how to be honest. Oh, yeah. There's victory in honesty. An author said this, Robert Brock said that he says, every lie is two lies. The lie we tell others and the lie we tell ourselves to justify it. <laughs> Spencer Johnson said that he says that integrity is telling myself the truth and honesty is telling truth to other people. 
Uh, and so now, and so now the Bible says, the Bible says in Psalm 101 and 6 said that my eyes will be on the faithful of the land uh, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in the way of integrity shall minister to me. No one who practices deceit shall dwell in my house. No one who tells lies shall stand in my presence. So if I am dishonest with myself, if I am dishonest with people, then what I'm saying is that I forfeit the presence of God. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter how jacked up the situation is. Your honesty will at least get you the presence of God. Hallelujah. Because when you confess your fault, he is faithful to forgive. And can I tell you, in this scene, there ain't no sense lying. Yeah, I, yeah, I did it, but I'm not who I am. I'm not what I did. And so now, the honesty, here it is. A man by the name of John Foss said that he said that honesty is more than not lying. It is telling truth, speaking truth, living truth and loving truth this man says i see men walking as trees i see men as trees walking now this says several things to us because you ain't been blind all your life and you can just automatically tell men from trees which means there was a point in time in his life where he could see but something happened that took his eyesight and so now he see men as trees which means now he see men as trees now now something is wrong with this because trees are not supposed to move if y'all leave here today leave scripture these are they from shouting and dancing and having a good word and we give and we go and then you start seeing trees walk up and down the street somebody take me to the airport I got to get out of this city because here it is anything if a tree keep uprooting itself it dies and so too much movement symbolizes your dying. Good God Almighty. And see, he see men as trees. Men ought to be like trees planted by the rivers of water. And so now please understand that what he is seeing through his eyesight is also revealing what he see in himself. Come on, come on. I, I, I'm coming to get you in just a moment. So when he see men as trees walking, what he's really saying is I can't see clearly because there's still something in me that is out of order. So it's not what I'm looking at necessarily out of order. It's still something in me that is out of order. There is uh, one of my favorite shows I like to watch. It's called Royal Pains. And there's something that I, that I found out. It's called Face Blindness Prosopragnosia. Uh, it is a face blindness, which means means which means a uh, 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 long story short if I look at you all I don't see you all I just see pastor's face so I can only see his face while looking at you all that's called face blindness which means there's something neurologically wrong when I see you all all I see is his face which means all I see is what I'm familiar with all right, all right, all right, I, I, I'm talking. And so now, and so now what Jesus has to do is, now again, there's something neurologically going on in his mind. And so now what Jesus has to do is, he has to go past his vision and deal with some stuff in his mind. Some stuff that he is familiar with. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't realize how important this miracle is. This miracle is way more important than his eyes becoming open. God now has to deal with his mind. So get out, so get, to get some stuff out out of him that he is familiar with good god almighty can i tell you ladies and gentlemen that hallelujah that destiny and familiarity cannot be in the same house if you want for god to do something for you you gotta get rid of the stuff you're familiar with okay all right i wish i was talking to some people here in order for you to see clearly in order for you to see better you got to let god deal with the stuff that you're familiar with hallelujah you're familiar with her but let him get rid of it so that you can see what healing feels like if you're familiar with sickness let him get rid of it so that you can know what wellness feels like he has to deal with the place of your familiarity so that now you can see clearly Hallelujah. Touch them out and tell them, be honest today. I'm not all that I should. There's some stuff in me that God still got to work out. I'm saved, but I still got some stuff in my heart that I need God to get. I'm saved, but there's still some hurt and some pain and some anger. I got to let God. I know it may not be a shoddy message, but we cannot allow 2020 to look like 2019. When you say, God, I'm hurting, but I know you can heal. I got some stuff in my past that's still in my eyes. But I trust you to turn it around. Shout 
defining part is this. The old church said, if you will be real with God, God will be real with you. And can I tell you that honesty will birth another touch? Okay, church, I don't know when it's shot. Let me say it again. I said, honesty will birth another touch. This man said, I see men as trees walking, which means he was honest about what he saw, which means what I saw does not look good. What I saw is still disfigured. What I saw, I do not have clarity on. And then the Bible said that Jesus lays his hands on him again. Would you touch somebody and tell them when you're honest with God, God will lay hands on you again. Who in here that needs another touch from God so that I can see clearly, so that I can discern clearly. I wish I had somebody that would lift your hands and tell God, touch me again. Bless my house again. Deliver me again. Give me another chance. I need another touch. I need another healing. I need another wave of glory. I need another experience. That's why the Bible says uh, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. That word faith is uh, the finisher. It means perfecter. And so now Jesus tells him, uh, the Bible said that Jesus lays hands on him again. Uh, and the Bible said this man began to see clearly. Uh, and so he moved from partial to wholeness. Uh, I want to tell somebody that woke up this morning, you got your shower, you ate your breakfast, and you got your good clothes on. Can I tell you that God does not want you to be half healed? God don't want you to be half blessed. God don't want you to be half successful. He wants you to have it all. Good God Almighty, I love you. And so what he has to do is with your honesty, he will lay hands on you again so that you can see clearly. I wish somebody would lay hands on your mind. And he's going to deal with my mind so that I can see clearly. Lay hands on your heart and he's going to lay hands on my heart so that I can see clearly again. I can see what I need to see. Somebody clap your hands and give God glory here. So, I got to go. You all have been so kind. He lays hands on him. Hallelujah. He lays hands on this man. And then he tells him something. Uh, he tells him something that's very strange. He tells this man, now that you're healed and you can see clearly. And you know how to decipher between men and trees. Which means you got your clarity back. You got your health back. You got your wholeness back. You got your strength back. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise it's different when you get your grip back. Hallelujah. Praise hits differently huh? when you're back in control when you have dominion huh? when you're not in the hands of uh, when you're not in the hands of evil doers and you're not in the hands of your enemy but then Jesus tells him he says I need you to go home but don't go back the same way you can which means that this man's house is not in Bethsaida Good God Almighty. Okay, okay, Pastor, why is that such a shiny point? Because Bethsaida is a place that seen miracles but have not repented. It is a place that doubts God because they don't really believe. And so what Jesus is saying is, I'm changing your route. You no longer have to be in the presence of people who don't believe. Holler, touch somebody tell them today I'm going home another way oh good God everybody I'm going home a different way I no longer have to be in an atmosphere that don't trust God I no longer have to be in an atmosphere that don't believe God is able can I tell you ladies and gentlemen you have every right to dismiss people that don't believe the same God that you serve if you ain't talking about I trust God I can't talk to you if you ain't talking about I believe God I can't talk to you I gotta be in the atmosphere Sphere that's conducive for miracle signs and wonder. And would you touch somebody and tell them God is changing your route so that you ain't even got to visit that place no more. I don't have to visit a place of doubt. I don't have to visit a place of worry. I don't have to visit a place that don't trust God. But God is changing my role so that I can go back home and convince the people who saw me when I was down that they can know that a change has happened to me. Would you touch somebody and tell them you're going home a different way today. Glory well, to God. I said, tell somebody else. Tell them you're going home a different way today. You're going home with a changed mind. Hallelujah to God. You don't have to do what you used to do. You're going home.
home a different way. You're going home able to see. You're going home healed in your right mind. Who in here needs to be healed today? You better lift your hand and say, God, touch me so that I can go home and I can strategize the way that I need to. I'm going home so that there can be victory in my house. I'm going home so that the people can know if God did it for me, he can do it for my whole family. Hallelujah. Touch somebody and tell them it starts with you and then it's going to go down to your family. That's getting ready to be a wave of healing signs and wonders simply because you trusted God and he laid hands on you. Touch somebody and tell them he's going to do it but not here. He's putting you in a place called victory. He's going to do it out of a place that said I believe God. Now if you don't believe God I ain't talking to you but I'm talking to some people today that said I believe God that he can be God again. If God did it once he can do it again. Do I have anybody in here that said I trust God that I was in the dark. He's going to bring me out of darkness and into the marvelous light. Touch about it and tell him I was I was sick. I was depressed. I was down. I was in the dark. But God who is rich in mercy has laid his hands on me and that's getting ready to be a touch from the Lord. I need about 10 people to open your mouth and give God praise for another touch. Y'all don't want to pray to I said get somebody. Can I get somebody that'll clap your hands and give God praise that he's getting ready to touch everything that was dark. He's getting ready to touch everything that wasn't clear. He's getting ready to touch everything that was out of order. Everything that wasn't working properly. That's getting ready to be another touch. But he had to lead you out of doubt. He had to lead you out of despair. He had to lead you out of a place that wouldn't believe God for your tomorrow. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, where God is taking you is getting ready to be beneficial. Why God is leading you is getting ready to change who you used to be. Where he where he's leading you is going to be better where you was and your testimony will be glory glory hallelujah since I lay my bird is down get somebody by the head rock him and shake him shake him and rock him and say neighbor I don't know about you but I'm going home in my right mind I'm going home with a great anointing I'm going home with a different mindset Satan had me bound but Jesus he lifted me is there anybody here that need God to lift you is there anybody here need God to bless you yes yes I want to leave you. I want to leave with this word. One word. And uh, and then uh, that's all I tell you. That's all I got. God bless you. This last word I want to leave you with is called recover. All right. I'm going to give you several definitions. You can shout off one. You can shout off all. You can shout off all of them if they hit your house. Because I told this man could see, but something happened in his life that allowed him to become blind. We were just talking about that. See, see, we got to realize that in life things happen. But you cannot allow the happenings to cause you to become dark. 
See, that's what happened. Something happened that allowed him to lose sight. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. But but when Jesus touches him, he, he hallelujah, he got his eyesight back and he was able to see clear. Hallelujah. And so now this word recover means to return to a normal state of health, mind, and strength. That's the first definition. It means to return to a state of health, mind, and strength. The second definition is to regain possession of something that was stolen or lost. The other definition is to regain control over physical or mental state. All right. The other one is to regain source or compensation. The other one is to make up for lost time. All right. All right. All right. All right. Y'all help me preach for the last, hallelujah, for the last three minutes. Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, this is your month of recovery. Look at them, this is your month of recovery. That means you're returning to a normal state of health, of mind of strength and for the next seven days you better rehearse that I'm getting my mind back you better rehearse I'm getting my strength back you better rehearse I'm getting my family back I'm done praying the problem but I'm leaving here rehearsing the possibility I'm leaving here rehearsing the promises of the Lord look at somebody else and say neighbor not only are you getting your strength back tell them not only are you getting your health back but you're getting control the stuff that slipped out of your hands you're getting your grip back you're getting your dominion back you're getting your power back every seed that you sown you're being compensated you're being compensated that's why the bible declares to cast that for not away your confidence for it brings about great recompense somebody said I'm getting my money back not only that but all of the time that I have invested in people that may not have appreciated but all the time I invested into people that did appreciate God said I'm making up for lost time Hug yourself and declare congratulations because time is getting ready to be on my side. Yes! So now scripture cathedral, don't you wait till the battle is over. I need about 10 people to open your mouth and give God a shout. Need a half hour to me and tell her recover. Tell her recover. 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 Regain. Replenish. Revive. Rejuvenate. Say Oh, yeah. All right. I uh, get a neighbor by the hand. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to pray for that hand that you're holding. That every dark place God will shed light to it. He wanted you to be in the dark. He wanted you to stay handicapped, depending upon others. But God is helping you to get back on your feet. Take about 60 seconds and pray for that hand that you're holding right where you are. Come on. Pray for that hand that you're holding. I want you to begin to pray for recovery. Right where you are. Pray for recovery. Come on, church. Begin to pray for it now.
Chicago, pray for him. Come on, believe God for him. Come on, 23 more seconds. Come on. Come on, pray like you know how. That recovery is theirs. That victory is theirs. That comeback is theirs. They're not leaving in the same way they came in. Come on. All right. Now. Next thing I want you to do is, I want you to praise God for victory coming to your house. Visions coming to your house. Clarity is coming to your house. Comprehension is coming to your house. Praise him. Lift him up. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. It's gonna hit your house. Another touch. It's gonna hit your house. Another move of God. It's gonna hit your house. 13 more seconds. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Now, watch this. Now, touch an ace labor. I'm getting ready to dance right here. All right. If they don't dance, you dance for them. Now, he told him, he says, I want you to go home, but do not go through the town and don't tell nobody what happened to you. Because why tell somebody who won't, who won't rejoice with you? Why tell somebody when they didn't even believe? So, the shouting part is, God is delivering me from some places I never ever have to visit again. All right, all right. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, you have been delivered from some places you never have to visit again. He has delivered you from some routes, from some roads, from some people, from some places, from some things you never have to visit again. Now, I want you to take about 60 seconds and I want you to begin to praise God for some places you never have to see again. Some places you never have to visit. Some things you never have to entertain. Some things you never got to come back across. Pray them. Hey!
about my she cool, yeah. What? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I know you. Yeah, I know y'all already shouted. I'm sorry. But this was shouted me. The Bible says, Pastor, that they bring him to Jesus, which means this man, he was just in the dark. He wasn't even thinking about leaving where he was. Somebody else brought him, which means the recommendation of somebody else calls him to see better. Let me say it one more time. The recommendation of somebody else calls him to get better. I want you all who believe God and believe, believe this. I want you to praise God that you get ready to be blessed from the recommendation of somebody else. You ain't got to believe it, but I need some people to hit that floor that God's going to do it for you because your name came up. Somebody recommended you. Hey! Scripture Cathedral. Raise your hand, all members. All members, raise your hand. I want you to take one more praise break to praise God. Hallelujah. As he's getting ready to touch Scripture Cathedral, there's getting ready to be another touch. And people will see this is the place where their eyes become open. They see clearly. They be able to comprehend that their bodies become healed. Glory to God. Yeesh. That there'll be another wave of glory. And I want you to praise God for your pastor. And I want you to praise God for this church. You got 60 seconds to do it. One, two, one, two, three, shout, shout. He's going to lay his hands again on scripture. How? Hey! How? Thank you. 
on me! Ah! Oh! Say one more thing. Yo, man. Don't you beat me up. Get somebody by the hand. And tell them, I got one more last thing to tell you. Tell them you're going to live to see it happen. You're going to live to see it happen. You're going to live to see it happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. Now look at somebody and tell them, say, live, 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 live. Live, 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 live. Oh. Tell them, say, live, 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 live. Hey. Say, live, live, live. Ah, he my boy, how? Say, live, live, live. I got my horse in your mouth. How? Say, live, 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 live. Say, live, 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 live. Say, live, 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 live. You're gonna live to see it happen. 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 No music. Say you're gonna live to see it happen. Say, I'm gonna live to see it happen. I'm gonna live to see it. Now lay hands on yourself. Say, live, 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 live. Say, live, 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 live. Say, live, 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 live. Say, live, 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 live. Now everybody praise him. Come on, come on. Thank you. 
Stay right there. Stay right there. I uh. Oh oh oh! Get you some. Get you some. Or she give her thirty more seconds. Out. Somebody help her in this house. Somebody she help her. She's gonna tax the seat. Well, she's gonna tax the seat. I'm gonna tax the seat. Oh! Oh! I'm gonna tax the seat. All right. All right. Now hold. I told, I told Pastor, I told Pastor Darnell and Ed, I told them the church I play for, it's a guy in the tennis section. He operates on 25% of his heart. Now, friendly, that's a dance all by itself. To still be alive, operating on 25%. Live, 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 live. Okay, right. Live, 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 live. All right, all right. Last Sunday he said Pastor I didn't tell you what the doctor said I said no you didn't tell me He said I went back to the doctor And he told me my heart went up 5% Tell somebody tell him You're not going down you're going up in this season. I'm going up. My credit is going up. My mind is going up. My hell is going up. Somebody give him a I praise. I praise. I praise. I praise. At the fresh, I'll let you shout five more minutes. I gotta go, I won't get in trouble. Tell somebody, tell me you're gonna live to see it happen. This will be a year where God leads you where you need to be. I know you're going to fill out some resumes, you're going to put in your name, but God's going to lead you right where you need to be. And it's going to all be good places. Everywhere I go, it will be because he led me there. 
every place. It's gonna be because he's leading me. Woo! Glory. He's gonna do it, but not here. He's gonna do it. It's gonna be a different area, different venue, different mindset. It's gonna, people are gonna be receptive to what you have to give. It's getting easy for the people of God. God bless you. I want. Stay right there. Keep that track going. Let's let's just stay right there. I, I ain't, ain't no sense moving. That's it right there. That's it right there. Thank you, Lord. I wasn't even expecting this, but it came to my house. That's gonna be some of you all's testimony. I wasn't even expecting this, but it showed up for me in my house. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I, uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 11, 24, 25, that he that is generous move into a generous place. He that is stingy move into a place of poverty. I want to challenge, I want to challenge, uh, I want to challenge 49 people. I want to challenge 49 people. I'm the 50th. I want to challenge 49 people. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is not hard to do at all.